From the guy that brought you the all-female Ghostbusters comes his newest foray into comedy, Jackpot! It's an R-rated Amazon exclusive, and who better to lead the cast than John Cena and Aquafina? I watched this movie, and now I'm going to review it. All right, so Jackpot is hey, a rated... Stop. Oh my god. You should tell them to subscribe to your stupid channel. That's a great idea. Aquafina, who's clearly in the room just off camera, not going to come on camera, said that you should subscribe to the channel. This one, Adam Does Movies, because I post movie content, reviews, rants, live streams every single week. Would love to have you stick around. Thank you. Thank you, Aquafina. Yeah, it's me, Aquafina. Yeah, get the hell out of my house. In what may be described as the dumbest plot ever created ever, Jackpot is about a distant future California that has come up with a new lotto system. And it works the same way as The Purge. And happens all the time. California, in its infinite wisdom, decides the best way to build up a sustainable economy is to hold a grand lottery where every participant gets a digital card. And when the winner is announced, everyone gets a notification who actually won and they have the opportunity to kill them and retain the cash for themselves. What could go wrong? This has been going on for several years in California. I don't really understand the logistics of it. I don't really get how people could go from bloodthirsty creatures to then back to doing their day-to-day -day jobs. But that's how this works in this universe. So you have to really set the brain aside and just go with the flow, which is to be fair, what I tried to do. And it probably would have been easier if the movie was funny. Now let me get all the cards on the table right away. I didn't think Jackpot was terrible. I didn't think it was particularly good. It's one of those films that sits uncomfortably right in the middle, almost reaching to heights and almost falling dead on its face. Let's talk about the good. If I can think of some. The stunt work. The stunts in this movie, there's lots of action. If you're looking for a film that moves pretty quick, this is around an hour 40, this will do the job. It's not like overly slow, although I did find myself wanting to fast forward a few times during monologues. There's a ton of action though. There's some really impressive stunt work going on and it's amazing to me that still in 2024 there isn't an award for best stunt work in a film. These people put it all on the line and they oftentimes take a movie that kind of sucks and elevate it. Like in the case of this one, Jackpot. There are some funny moments and characters in this. Paul Feig hasn't made only bad movies. He did Bridesmaids, which I think is pretty universally appreciated. A lot of people like Heat. He's got a collection of films up and down the block. But what really misses for me are the leads here. John Cena, who I've actually liked quite a bit in other films, I think he's a terrific peacemaker, feels so lifeless in this film. He feels drained of all energy. He just felt so de-energized in the role. They give him this odd characteristic that he's really into the Ninja Turtles, but it really only comes up one time at the beginning and then again way at the end. There's no real references to it throughout the film, which made it a little bit odd. But not as odd as casting Aquafina as the lead. Aquafina needs to stay in her fucking lane as a third string supporting character in a movie, not the lead character. I mean, in, if it was up to me, her lane would be just not in movies. But listen, it's different strokes here, folks. I know there's people that can't stand Jim Carrey. I think Jim Carrey is one of the funniest guys around. I put Aquafina in the same boat as I put Carrot Top, Larry the Cable Guy, Polly Shore. I just don't get these people and they do not make me laugh and that's okay. I would not have watched this film if it wasn't for a supporter on the channel that said, Adam, here's some money during a live stream. I want you to watch and review this film because I really like you, but I also want you to suffer for your craft. And so I suffered and I watched Jackpot. And thankfully it wasn't near as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but it still wasn't anything great. So Katie is a chips are down, fish out of water in California. She's been looking after her mom for a couple years and they were basically news off at the house. So they had no idea there was this purge-esque scenario going on at California where they have these lotteries and then everyone can go after the lottery winner and try to kill them for the lottery themselves. Also talk about just like a trust exercise, right? To, to, to be running for your life, winning the lottery, and then as soon as the countdown goes to zero, everyone just is like, oh, I didn't kill you, so now we're done. Or what's to stop you from the winning the lottery, another person coming over, stabbing you, 
claiming the win, but then another person stabbing them and taking the win and then just, just going on and on. They don't really go into it because again, it's a really dumb premise. You just have to not think about it at all. Katie Airbnb is a place that looks nothing like the photos. The roommate's trash. Her friend is trash. Everybody in this movie kind of is, except for John Cena's character. I think it's Noel, Noel, N-O-E-L. I don't remember what, how they say it in the movie, but it's spelled N-O-E-L. Uh, I'm an idiot, so it's hard for me to recall how you would say that name. We're gonna call him John Cena. So Katie wins the lottery by mistake when she has to rent out her friend's clothes because her friend destroyed hers due to sewage leaking from the ceiling onto said clothes. Inside the pocket, Katie accidentally thumb presses the digital card, which gives her access to the lottery. Why her friend didn't do this ahead of time, I'm not sure. Maybe it's like when the clock strikes whatever, you activate your card, you don't do it when you buy it sort of thing. I don't know. It's not really explained. Who cares, right? Nothing matters. She quickly finds out that she's public enemy number one as everyone's after her for her money that she doesn't have yet, but will have it if she survives. That's where Cena comes in, offers up his protection for 10% of the winnings. Right out of the gates, I'm thinking 10%, dude? At least go for 20. 30 seems realistic considering what he's having to do for her, but I get it, he's doing contract work. He left the company that he used to be with, which was this high-tech, state-of-the-art, massive compound run by Simu Liu. Simu Liu, outside of Shang-Chi, has been doing a string of pretty shit movies. He had a great supporting role in Barbie, but I've seen him in like three really bad straight-to-streaming films. He was in that one with J-Lo a couple months ago. The guy deserves better. He's really talented and he's very funny if he's given the right material. So John Cena and Aquafina are basically gonna drive around avoiding a bunch of different people, trying to kill them constantly, cracking one-liners, doing their thing. Aquafina in this movie, I will say, she's at least a bit toned down for the most part. She's not constantly like up here. Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm Aquafina. Ah. I do voiceover work for some reason in like 18 different movies and I do it the same every fucking time. I'm like Gilbert Gottfried if he did the parrot in every movie ever made. Fina, I call Aquafina Fina for short now. She, um, she's not good, but she's not like terrible. I just kept thinking while this was going, there, there are so many people that would be better at this, that could make this stuff funnier. Like, was Melissa McCarthy busy that afternoon? They couldn't call McCarthy on the phone? Get her in this movie? Was Jennifer Lawrence not around? Emma Stone? Hell, if you needed the lead to be Asian, could we not get Lucy Liu? She's hilarious and charming and lovable and beautiful. Get her in the film. But we had to reunite the cast from Shang-Chi for this one, I guess. So this is what we're working with. The only other thing I'll say about this character, Katie, is she's pretty unlikable. They give her a sympathetic character and someone you can root for, but then they make her personality kind of trash. She's constantly making fun of and knocking everyone she meets to their face. Like John Cena's character has done nothing throughout the film but prove his loyalty in protecting her. And all she keeps saying to him is like, you're ugly. How do I know you're not gonna just turn around and kill me as soon as you have the chance? He could just take your neck and go and you're done and he gets the money. He has done so many life risking scenarios for you. I don't know how you can look this guy and go, Fuck you, you just want my money. And she actually punches him at one point right in the nose, busts his nose. He does nothing back. He's like, oh, I forgive you for some reason. It's also established that instead of opting to play the lottery, you can leave at any time by just driving past the state lines. And so early on, she's like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go across the state lines. And Cena's like, okay. I'll, I'll take you there because I actually just care about you and whatever. And she's like, no, you're not. You're gonna, you're gonna kill me as soon as you can. I don't believe you. So if that's the case, just kick him out of the car and drive across yourself. And as soon as you're across state lines and the game's over, then you can give him his car back or something. Or I don't, I, like there's just so many scenarios where I was just frustrated with this all around. Even when she gets to the compound and Simu Lu is like, hey, you know, we want 30% and we're gonna protect you. You are enclosed, it's safe. We have all these troops. She's like, yeah, is that why you have tacky outfits? Cause you can afford them? You suck. This is all stupid, blah. I'm just like, what are you doing, lady? 
Do you want these guys to help you? They could all choose to just kill you. There are so many like little things that annoy the shit on me about this movie. I wanted it to be like a Zoolander or an Austin Powers or a Happy Gilmore or a, you know, whatever. Just take your pick. There's so many good ones. But instead, it's just this Paul Feig type comedy that I can't stand from him. Where the characters are so unlikable and there's just not a lot of depth to any of the jokes. There's nothing that's like laugh out loud funny. It's all just very surface basic crap. Like, oh, I, I fell down or I got knocked out by something, like Pratt falls left and right. So overall, I guess, this is not something I would waste my time with. But if you're desperate for a comedy that's rated R, I guess, for violence and some swearing, this is okay if you've, I guess, exhausted every other funny movie out there. <laughs> Jackpot is harmless trash you can put on in the background. That's probably the best thing I can say. Jackpot's harmless trash you can put on in the background. Look up every once in a while from your phone and go, oh, that was okay. Uh, but no, I like to actually sit and watch a movie and enjoy it and appreciate it. And there's just not much here to appreciate. Outside, again, the wonderful stunt work. Some of the choreography is very solid. Why is Aquafina the one that's doing this stuff? I don't know, but that's where we're at in life. Let me know your thoughts though. Did you see this film? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Put a comment below. Like the video. Think about subscribing to the channel. I would appreciate it. Aquafina would appreciate it, I'm sure. And that way I can provide you more content down the road. If you feel bad for me that I had to watch this movie or just just in general, please leave a super thanks below this video. Show your appreciation or become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's lots of offerings there, lots of tiers. And I have a second channel that's pretty new called Adam Does Rants, where I'm doing this, but it's everything besides movies, talking about first world problems in a comedic fashion. And hopefully I can provide some laughs for you, much like Jackpot didn't do for me. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.